Good morning, carbon-based life forms. <laughs> Good morning. All life on this planet is carbon-based. Yet, many in Washington declare carbon is a pollutant. Is life a pollutant? The EPA, when you breathe, you inhale four parts of carbon dioxide for every 10,000 parts of air. When you exhale or emit, you emit 400 parts of carbon dioxide for every 10,000 parts of air. You increase the carbon dioxide concentration of the air you use by 100 times. The EPA has declared that carbon is hazardous to human health. Carbon dioxide is breathing hazardous to human health. Eleven government entities claim that carbon dioxide emissions have a social cost, providing a justification to tax it, to tax your breathing. These entities include the Department of Agriculture. It appears that the Department of Agriculture no longer recognizes that carbon dioxide is essential for photosynthesis, the beginning of all food manufacturing on this planet, or virtually all. All green plants depend upon it, and animals as well. Yesterday, we honored Sherwood Itso for his pioneering work on the benefits of increasing atmospheric carbon dioxide. Virtually all green plants and the environment and virtually all food crops grow more proficiently under higher concentrations of carbon dioxide than, than they have now. The Department of Agri Agriculture should be praising the social benefits of carbon. How have we reached this madness that carbon dioxide is a pollutant? In his book, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions, Thomas Kuhn addresses progress in scientific knowledge and asserts it is not necessarily linear. In fact, there are discontinuities. Often, there is a great spurt in progress when one concept or mindset of approaching nature's puzzle is replaced by another. He calls these concepts paradigms. And they, that include the way to approach and analyze the data and create experiments on the data and experiments on the natural features. Up to the 1970s, the most understanding of the influence of carbon, uh, climate change was limited to departments of uh, geology. They believe that climate change has been occurring for hundreds of millions of years. There is, uh, it is perfectly natural and normal. In the 1970s, some scientists began advocating that are speculating about the influence of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, increasing carbon dioxide, and how that would influence climate. Some of the scientists thought it would cause cooling. Others thought it would cause warming. In 1997, uh, 79, a very influential report was released by a special committee uh, for the National Resource Council of the National Academy of Sciences. This report is called the Charney Report. In it, it estimated that a doubling of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere would increase global temperatures by a range from 1.5 degrees C to 4.5 degrees C, about 3 to 8 degrees Fahrenheit. Since the Charney report, the UN intergovernmental, oh, excuse me, 
after this report, the focus for all most research on carbon dioxide was to find how much it will increase warming. And the, uh, and the paradigm, the mindset, perhaps was best articulated by four scientists with NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies. They stated in a paper, atmospheric carbon dioxide is the principal component control knob, principal control knob governing Earth's temperature. There's nothing clearer than that. Carbon dioxide controls Earth's temperature. Since the Charney report, the UN Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change, IPCC, has issued five major reports. With a minor blip, these reports repeat the findings of the 1979 Charney report. In 35 years, we have made no progress in understanding this critical variable, how much a doubling of car carbon dioxide would increase the Earth's temperature. Something is wrong. The research is not fruitful. In the view of SEP, recent research ignored by the IPCC indicates climate sensitivity, sensitivity to be below the range estimated by the IPCC and may well be below one degree C. In 19, uh, excuse me, in 2009, the EPA declared that atmospheric carbon dioxide endangers human health. It claimed that the climate models are reliable. Here we see the climate models in red forecasting temperatures through 2013 and observations from weather balloons and satellites showing what was actually observed. The climate models greatly overestimate the influence of carbon dioxide. Here we see 73 climate models, the jumbo of spaghetti. You'll see the black line showing the average of those models. And then you'll see the uh, green and blue dot, dots indicating observation show. Add to this, Howard uh, Hayden added to this, little red lines. They indicate the disparity between observations and the models at when IPCC reports were issued. What a miracle. The more the disparity, the greater the disparity, the greater the confidence that the IPCC expresses in its worth. The failure of the IPCC is not from the failure of financing. Three government agencies have issued financial estimates of how much the federal government has spent since 1993 on what it classifies global warming slash climate change. We've examined, SEP has examined these reports and found that between 1993 and two, uh, 2013, total U.S. expenditures amounted to more than $165 billion. More than $35 billion identified by government as being science, climate science. By way of, com in August 2013, the White House reported the fiscal year, uh, year policy uh, expenditures were some 22 Point five billion. You'll see the list. Now, the, uh, well, the only one that is listed as science is the U.S. GS, GCRP report, or National Climate Assessment. It used general climate, global climate models to estimate what will happen to the U.S. regionally. You can't do that. It's absurd. The models are failing. There's no reason to accept their regional projections. You'll also see about 89% of the funding goes to special interest groups 
including green power and all this other stuff. The Department of Energy that is financing all sorts of ridiculous stuff to try to save energy. Without, this has built a massive lobby, a lobby of fear of climate change, fear of global warming. Without the fear of global warming, there is little justification for much of these $22.5 billion in expenditures. It is time for the government to stop funding irrational fear of global warming slash climate change based on a conception of climate that is not substantiated by the physical science. If we are to progress in our understanding of climate change, the paradigm must be changed from one that the Earth's temperature is largely controlled by car atmospheric carbon dioxide to one which recognizes climate change is normal and predominantly natural. Human emissions of carbon dioxide had little or if any influence on temperatures or other climate temp uh, trends. Thank you.